Hello friends, welcome to this uh, third video on how to design your Lancelot speaker. And in this video I'm gonna answer um, everything around my approach to creating the crossover and around measurements. And one of the questions I'll be answering is around uh, from Jürgen. And Jürgen posted this comment and a question. He said, it would be interesting to see you measure your room when design your room when designing the cabinet. Was that with ears only or did you do it with mic and software? Well, you might be looking at part of the answer, but it was um, it was both. And, um, and basically in my general approach, it is that I use measurements usually to get into the ballpark. And then I start listening to it. So um, once I've got the drivers in my hand, so the first thing I do when I receive drivers is just measure them. Uh, I measure their teal small parameters. I measure their frequency response. So I do like a 30 or 60 centimeters. I just measure the response. I'm trying to avoid reflections from surfaces when I do this. And so here in green line, you see the, the woofer. And then in the red line is the, is the, the, crosser, is the compression driver. So this this one, the other line here is the, the woofer in free air and you see it dropping off here because you get a bit of cancellation between the front and the back frequencies. So that's what I do first and I know what I'm working with. Um, of course, then it's better to put it in the cabinet and see what you got there um, before you do the crossover. But from that point on, I, I have a decent idea so I can calculate what I need from the crossover and um, after I've done that, I'll, 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 I'll usually tune the, I'll, I'll immediately start tuning the crossover to, to start sounding good. Um, but all the while I do that, I try to do periodic measurements. And also when I get stuck, when I don't know something, I will take a measurement to see, to, to actually learn to correlate my hearing with what I can see in the measurements. So whether that is a waterfall graph or I don't have that here, but, um, or it's just the frequency response or the phasing, any of that I can sort out with, with this software. And this software, by the way, is REW. Um, so I used it in conjunction with my microphone. Um, so that's the starting point. And sometimes also you need to solve particular problems. So one of the problems I had to deal with is that uh, the compression driver, well, this is quite normal. So it runs up until it hits 500 Hertz and then it has a flat response until about three kilohertz. When I measure it up close, it's it's straight, but when I actually put it into the case, it's much similar to this. So it, it's dropping off after three and a half kilohertz with uh, with six dB per octave. So it has half the output at at um, what is yeah. So it runs off every time every doubling of the frequency. I get minus six dB, um, and that because this is such a high efficiency driver. And I have way, and I need to attenuate it anyway. I can compensate by giving it a signal that runs opposite, so that it runs down with 6 dB, and um, and then I've got the shelf, and then it runs down further. But I can just let the frequency, the the, the amount of energy drop with the high pass filter, and that will make this into a flat response. So I've sort of drawn it out here. So here I've got the driver. So if I have the signal doing this, so it drops off from 20 kilohertz or whatever point I choose there and I drop off to the left and then I flatten it out in where I get the maximum response from the woofer from the sorry from the compression driver and then of course I can let it drop off uh, at the, where it meets the woofer so that's the point where it meets the woofer and then if you add the, the, the woofer here up with the compression driver you get a nice flat response and of course, I'll measure that in the room. And I'm trying to find points in the room that are, um, when I measure it, that are sort of representative for the whole room, that are, are reasonably representative. Um, because it will be an average, and so it's, it's, it's probably, you know, if you want a real scientific about it, uh, you, you probably... Um, um, you, you probably want to take multiple, me multiple measurements in your room. Um, now, okay, the, the equipment that I use for that is this. Um, so I use this, which is the Dayton Audio Deaths V3. So I use that for the to establish the free air parameters. So you hook up 
you hook up this to the to the woofer or to a uh, inductor or a capacitor and you can measure it in for for speakers of course for drivers like this you can measure their free air parameters um, determine their um, compliance and so on so very important that you do that when you receive them so that you know that they are not broken um, then for measurements I use this um, so this is a um, a microphone it's not a USB microphone it's a, a an XLR microphone it actually needs 48 volts uh, to power it and so um, this little module here which is the Motu M4 which is a four channel DAC and four uh, channel ADC I use that um, for um, record rec my measurements so I can determine the level the, le the level here of the sound and um, yeah, you can also use it for other things. My initial plan was to use this for, you know, some people do buy amping and active, but I thought, you know what, it's sort of very strange that you would have your signal out of an amp, lead it into, say, something like mini DSP, and then split it out uh, using a digital filter and go through the whole ADC deck process again. I thought, you know, well, let's cut out the middleman, just have your computer lead it to, you know, if you would apply two decks which this is, you can just feed the channels directly and do everything in software and you don't have to uh, redo this whole an uh, analog to digital, do all the Fourier um, transformations and then go back to uh, analog again. That just seemed a bit um, not optimal. So, the approach that I took with my, when I redid the crossover, um, if we go back to this, so what I did in, my, in, in creating my uh, crossover is I knew I already had a very effective, uh, my woofer would run a little bit like this, so it just had a, um, it, it only had a coil, so it had this in its signal path, if this is your inductor, and, that's, and that gave me a very slow, um, um, declining slow uh, slowing response so most of the energy is set in the low so this this started turning from about eight, 280 hertz and then it ran off but the thing that i found is that the the the, the altec 414 has sort of a resonance at 2.3 kilohertz and this peak was actually coming through in the overall response and i didn't like the the, the character of that of that peak it was not just a peak it was actually a resonance so um if it was probably just volume it wouldn't have been irritating but it it, um, it didn't contribute well so what i wanted to do is just um, have it run a, off a bit quicker so that this that that peak would be at a lower level and therefore not audible in the overall signal and i also discovered that my compression driver instead of running to 500 i found that it had as you could have seen here it had a dip in the response here and I didn't get the full energy output between four and thousand even though in the spec sheet it is or they compensated with a, horn, a specific horn that that might be a thing because the resonance frequency is at 450 and it can definitely handle the energy that I throw at it um, so it needs maybe a bit more exploring and I'll have to sort of check also what the difference between the two drivers is I, I don't remember exactly um, but because of that, I chose the 800 hertz um, um, as the crossover point. So the, the woofer actually now meets at 800. So if we go back here, when it starts, so it, the, the inductor actually bends it down. So this is still first order. And then second order keeps, kicks in here at 800 hertz where it goes down. It decreases the peak and um, the crossover for the compression driver then meets it at a hundred. That's the plan. But the first stage that I did is just put the woofer in and do this. So this 6 dB slope, so this high pass filter, that's let the energy in the high is come, come through, but then run off. And then of course I would have, I needed to create this shelving. So that was my second step. I will do that later. But so the, the thing that I then did is implement these two extremes so i had the woofer running as i wanted it with maximum energy and then i would adjust the the, the the compression driver to actually give me the right response now 
once I did that, I knew I would have a gap because that, you know, you, you saw that the shelving, the shelving I hadn't done. So at that point, it was just running here, right? So I was, I would be missing it because the woofer not did not quite reach um, that part. So you can see that here. So you can see it here. So of around 600 hertz, it was dropping off. And then it me it meets this um, this high pass, which now has corrected and given a, a nice flat response of the compression driver on the same level as as the woofer. Just forget about that uh, room those remotes there. Um, I since pulled out the speaker out of the corner a little bit and sort of that that con uh, with that I can control how much uh, bass lift I get. So if you're a bass head, you'd leave it like this <laughs> and else you just pull it out of the corner until it's um, at your taste. Um, this suck out is very uh, normal for speakers in rooms. You get always a bit of cancellation in the frequency range. Um, all of yet investigated. So after I did, I did the second one and that is I've basically added to this signal. I've added this bit. So I just added it up and because of the level of difference there, it, yes, it adds a little a slider on top um, because of the logarithmic scale of how music functions. And I added the shelf in. So uh, the network sort of looks like this. You've got a capacitor with a resistor and a capacitor with a resistor to um, get to the, the right levels for the both shelves. And then here you have the compression driver. So that's how I have this. You can improve this, of course, by using um, say an auto performer or um, you could use different networks, but this is at the moment how I have it. Um, so after I did it, it looked like this. So and as you can see now, it's um, this is a slightly different location as well. As you can see here, um, the, the, the room modes have changed a little bit. Um, Generally, a reasonable flat um, response. I still have a little bit of peakiness, but it's it's much less than it used to be. And um, even though this may, may still look shocking to some of you, um, this this actually sounds good. And one of the reasons, of course, why this looks very different from um, most speaker measurements is because we're getting effects of. Um, instead of having the the woofer and the and the and the tweeter in a normal sort of, sort of beaming and being optimized to um, exactly to a certain height be, uh, between the two drivers and in your head, which is supposed to be there uh, on the on the right angle where you're sitting and produce a flat response. Of course, we've got a compression driving firing upward and a little bit towards you. So um, what I find is that in the in the in the, in the in these frequencies, you just have to tune by ear in your room, um, the higher frequencies, and not pay too much attention to these uh, measurements, because they're then it is hard to pick a location in your room where this is actually entirely re uh, relevant. Um, now you could do that for your uh, sweet spot. Um, but uh, yeah, I always find that it looks a bit jaggy, uh, jaggier, this, this, this graph compared to when you would um, have um, drivers facing you, even with these exact same drivers. So, um, so that is maybe my approach. Just get the high end right, get it at the right level, get the leveling up with the high end and then just see what I, what, what I had in the gap. And, um, and that approach, in, including for the rest, keeping a quite simple um, crossover structure, so uh, with minimal components, no, the, the baffle is the, the baffle step that you get is also doesn't need a network. I haven't done anything with the impedance or correcting that because I knew I would be adding uh, running it with a tube amp. Um, but yeah, that has been my approach to these measurements and. Um, and, and of course, if you want to do your your room, it, it is good to sort of walk around your room, seeing where it sounds best and then uh, measure in that spot. Uh, make sure that you don't have any reflecting surfaces in between you and the speaker. Um, yeah. And then you'll end up. But as I said, with this speaker, you know, measurements is one thing. It's good when you get stuck. You don't know what to do. Um, it's good to build it up like that and you just have the drivers in the 
in the enclosure and, and see it. Um, but after that, I would tune by ear um, because, you know, that's in the end of the day what you have to listen to. Um, and then also, um, you know, just live with it for two, three weeks when you, when you really start getting into the finer tweaks. Because what you want is just all music to sound, as many m music to sound good, not just, you know, what, what some people have is just three, four, five tracks that they listen to that they think they know how they sound. I, I wouldn't do that. You, you want your whole collection to sound good. That is a good speaker when it can do everything well, um, not just four, four tracks. That is, then you need a thousand speakers to play your music collection. So that's um, a bit silly, um, I would say at least. Um, so. Let's see where we are. We are at 11 minutes, 15 minutes. So that, that is long enough for this video. I had a couple of more questions from Playback Mansion, but they're not directly sort of related to this um, series of um, on, on the crossover. So this concludes my series of designer of designing your Lancelot speaker. Um, if you have any questions, just post it in the comments and I might do a, a final sort of Q&A on this. Um, but else, thank you for listening. Uh, I wish you the, the best in, in, in getting your gear together and, or the building products, the projects that you have. Um, please share when you have results or, or are doing projects. And um, yeah, have a great day. Thank you for listening. And thank you for listening to this series. And um, I hope you got something out of it. All right, bye-bye.